Okay, so in the last video, when I was sitting in a completely different place, and I was wearing different clothes, it's not the same day. Illustrations by Pete. I was doing a gouache painting, black watercolor ground. I just wanted you to see the difference. So the one I'm going to do today is on the black watercolor paper. It's so different. The gouache dries completely different. It interacts with the sizing on the paper a lot more and the fibers in the paper that move a little bit. It's 100% cotton. It's just black paper. Of course it's Legion because they make the best paper. I want them to pay me every time I say that. They don't want to. But hopefully with your encouragement, maybe one day they may pay me to say that. So the main point of this video though was not that. That's, I should have started with the main point. I'm not good at this, so I didn't. But really, the main idea was inspiration. Someone commented a couple videos ago. It was the watercolor painting that I did on the Stonehenge oil paper. And they said, how do you just come up with stuff? Like, it's so natural, the way that you come up with the design and how things are. It wasn't. It, if you take that thing, flip it upside down, put it at 45, I'll put that link down below. Go check that, just the end result and you put it 45 maybe i'll just pop up a picture so you can see it i don't want to force you to watch another video of course you always could watch another video but you see when it's sitting there it looks like melted ice cream cake that was dripping down off the counter that was my inspiration right there and in this video it's basically it's just a like a water pot with some flowers and things behind it and different plants and things but i made it an abstract piece from that so i always look for inspiration with an abstract piece i find something i like the way that it flows the composition it looks nice and i take that and make an abstract painting with it so that's what i did here and that was the main point of this video i should have started with that now the way that i use the gouache in this is I just use white gouache and then I put watercolor and mix it over the top of the white gouache. The reason I don't just mix the gouache with the watercolor and then put it on the page is because sometimes it comes out a little bit dark, but also I don't want it to be thoroughly blended. I want to get some texture in there. So when you put the watercolor into the white gouache, the way that it spreads and kind of blooms sometimes is just pretty. It looks nice. There's a lot of texture to it and that's what I really like. So I just put the white gouache on in the shape that I want. I put some watercolor on top of it into that and just add watercolor to it continuously. And sometimes I go too dark and I've got to go back and put more white gouache in there. But that's the effect I'm going for. I want the texture. I want to see the little, little sunbursts, the little things. And, and that's why I usually don't put ink on these is because I like to see the texture of the paint flowing without the hard defined edges. Okay, so let's go see if this works or if I'm delusional. I could be. Okay, so this is really about seeing like an artist. It's about what can you get inspiration from. And every time I do this, I, I look around, usually in nature, I look around the world around me, but many times like the last one was just the ice cream cake dripping off the counter. That was enough for me. I looked at it, I said, well, that's kind of a cool little pattern. Maybe I could flip it around and do something with it and create some composition with it and see how it looks. So, it, of course, while it was still melting, I wasn't fixing any problems. I was just watching the stuff melt onto the floor and had to clean up. But anyway, when you look out in nature, you can see when you look at the way that trees are grouped together or you see the way a garden the plants are growing a certain way or just look at composition just composition get your inspiration just from that even get a little sketch pad cheap paper with a little pencil it doesn't have to be anything important it doesn't have to be anything special just take it and just start oh yeah okay this is looks like this it's kind of interesting if i maybe move this line over here or move the you know this structure of the lines over in this direction it looks a little nicer i always do this that's how i get most of my ideas what i'm doing i don't know what it's going to do when I put it on the paper. I don't know what it's going to look like because even if I start with an idea, it does. I don't know where it's going to go from there. I just develop it as I do it. But 
at least sometimes when I do the painting part of it, if I do line and wash stuff especially, or abstract painting stuff especially, I just try and figure out a simple composition in my head. I thought that looked cool. I saw the way that those mushrooms were growing out of that tree sideways, and it had like a weird kind of, it looked nice. It was kind of interesting composition. So then I try and, okay, I'm just gonna splash some paint on and do it in this, then just see what happens. And then you figure it out, you add the details, you develop the areas you wanna develop, things that interest you as you go. That's what the way that I enjoy doing abstract art. And if you're struggling with not knowing how to do abstract art, start with that. Get something that you like the way it looks, just the composition, and then make it abstract. Just put some, some just put, color on the paper, put lines on the paper in that fashion and see what you can develop from there. Okay, so today I wanna to talk about if you feel unaccomplished as an artist, I just wanna encourage you a little bit. So this is not at all, I know the way this is gonna come off. It's hard to talk about this stuff without having it come off kinda of weird. So this has nothing to do with me I really want you to focus on you when I tell you this. I just can only talk from my own experience. So just keep that in mind as I'm talking, okay? So I wanna to touch on a few things here and then I'll bring them into the real world for you. So if you feel like you haven't accomplished much as an artist and you've been at it for a while and you don't feel like you're where you should be, it's taking longer maybe to grasp some things or you feel like you're not improving and and you're looking at all these statistics in any arena, like on Facebook, wherever you post your stuff, Instagram, YouTube, whatever else you do, maybe it's sales, maybe you're looking on your Etsy shop or you're looking at your local craft store or book sales or wherever you post your stuff or put it for sale. Doing this one thing could help and you may not be able to wrap your head around it because of all the programming that's already in your brain, but just try, just for a little while, try this. Stop looking at goal numbers. I know this is hard for a lot of people, me included. When I started uh, Instagram and since I've started YouTube especially, I would sit there with the app open constantly refreshing how many views and how many subs and how many comments. And I, I had an Etsy shop. This is just a quick story. I had an Etsy shop at one time, I check it 25 times a day before lunch to see if I got a sale, and no, I didn't. I, I bought prints to craft shows I was doing with my wife. Now, she's good, and I know that she creates stuff, and people want them, and they want to buy them, and I figured if X number of people visit the booth, and X percent end up buying something based on the amount of things we have available for sale, I should have about X number of sales and I'm the numbers person like that. I like to do all those figures. Well, guess what? It never happened. I don't mean sometimes it, it didn't happen. I mean, never. I have never sold a single piece of art in seven years. I have put artwork up for sale on Etsy. I have put it up on sale on eBay. I've put it at craft shows, not a commission, not a print, not an original, nothing zero. And so what? Should I quit? I have a legitimate reason to. Seven years is a long time going with zero sales. That's, that tells you something either about your skill or about what you're doing. Now I remember opening up my YouTube app and finding on the day, this still happens today. I will post a video that I loved, that I thought was great. It had I don't know, it had good energy. I thought it was the best video ever. It was a good topic, it was engaging. And I'd lose viewers that day. I'd lose subscribers on the day that it posted. And I could have had a great day at work and and I was having a great day with my wife, maybe in a, uh, I was in a good mood and all of a sudden my day is ruined. I was in a crap mood at that point. I wasn't mad but I became depressed a little bit, down. Then as those things happen over and over and over, you could be up and down from one moment to the next and eventually you become desensitized to the high points and you're only affected by the low points. And that's how you can develop a form of depression. That's, you hear all the studies about 
not just kids, adults who live their lives on social media and develop chronic depression because they posted something and no one liked it or something. It's the same thing with other areas, especially in art. You know, it's like setting a goal to complete X number of pieces in a given number of time. That's, that is also a part of it. I know some people, they think they need to set like a number goal as motivation or they won't be accountable for the end result. But I want you to think about it differently just for a minute. How disappointed in yourself do you feel when something comes up that requires your attention more than your art? And you miss that number that thing. Oh, I didn't get to create this week. I should have been this far to meet my goal for the month. Or you may have been busy the whole month and not done anything. For some people, they just feel like they broke the cycle and they'll never catch up. And it, it makes it worse for them. But nothing was actually missed except for like an artificial restriction that you put on yourself. Now, obviously, I am not talking about a deadline for a job you have or a deadline for a client that you're working with, that's different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the numbers you invent as a goal and then obsess over them, which has the ability to bring you down when you would otherwise, you probably have no reason to be down. There is a solution, but you have to reprogram your brain for it to work. The reason it affects us that strong is because we have an end result in mind and that's, that's okay. It's a desire to succeed. There's nothing wrong with that. And you're told in every self-help book, every whatever, every positive thinking, nonsense, garbage thing, you're told that you have to focus on that, focus on the end, focus on anything to get there, put it in front of you. It's garbage. Your focus needs to be on now and not the not yet. And I'm not trying to sound philosophical. I want to slap myself because I just said those words. But what I mean is I know where my end goal is. I have an end goal. But it's not the same as creating a goal for now. My end goal is to create for a living. That's what I want to do to pay my bills, to help some people who need it. I want to save up for the end of my life. I want to take my wife on a nice vacation. And believe me, she deserves it for putting up with my nonsense all the time. But to get there, I know what I have to do. And this is my primary focus. In order to reach my goals, I need to focus on helping people and encouraging people. That's why I don't care how many people unsubscribe from me today because I got that one comment that said, Hey Pete, this video came out right and in time for me. I was having a hard time knowing where to go for inspiration or I wanted to get back into art, but I didn't know how to start and I saw the video and it helped me. That makes my week. I don't care about any of the negative stuff when I get those comments, which is why as soon as I post a video, I wait for comments. And that's what I look for. And when I see that from you and you say, hey, this helped me or whatever the comment is, even if it's just, hey, I got a laugh from you this time. I like that, whatever. That's that's it. I'm set. And sometimes those comments aren't even left on my videos. Sometimes people just send me a private message about a video and they send it through Instagram or they send me an email. So that destroys any feelings of failure I could ever have because I've accomplished my goal, the important one, the helping people or, or just giving them inspiration or making them feel good. It is, that is the focus of what I'm doing. And as long as I keep the main focus of my art that, I, I can go through all the other stuff. Now, I still look at numbers to evaluate things. I don't want to, I, I do have a business kind of mind that's been drilled into me since I was younger, and I do still evaluate numbers. I still, but I only do that, like if I'm going to upload a video, I'll quickly look through my numbers and evaluate things. How did that last video do about that subject? Were people not interested in it or whatever? I still look at those things. How long were people watching the video? Did they skip over this part? Did they skip over the intros? Did they skip over the ends? Whatever the case is, I still look at that. But just very much not as often as I used to. Used to be all the time. Oh, did anybody like this? How, was this no, video number one out of 10 or was it five out of 10 or was it 10 out of 10? Was it a good video or a bad video? Did I like, I don't do that anymore because I've changed my focus to people. My main goal is now to add value to others, and that has changed how I do everything. Everything else is so much less important. I think one of the things that bothers me most now when I watch other people's art videos 
is when they say things like, oh, I don't care what any of you think about this because I'm doing this for me. That should tell you everything you need to know about that person. I know there's all that, oh, I live my life for me, I do all this for me, and, and everybody rah rahs that. I don't like that. I don't just do what I do just for me. I think that's a selfish way to live. And I know most of the people who say it feel that they've been taken advantage of or they feel that they've given a lot of energy to a certain person who has then betrayed them and that's it, I'm doing this for me now. I get it, I understand that, but I never, ever want to have that attitude. I don't care what happens in my life, never. I want to always do things for other people. I think it's important. I think it's the main focus of when you're trying to do something. So don't get me wrong, I do things for myself. This this whole thing, I'm doing for me, I am. This is going to be the life that I want to create for me and for my family. But the only way I can do it is to do it for other people. It's the only way to be successful. And I think that's a, that's a nice thing, that's a nice goal. I think that's a nice goal. I think the only way that I can succeed is by impacting other people in a positive way. I think that's a great way to live your life. And it doesn't have to be some deep emotion. It could be something simple like you make someone smile that day or whatever the case is. Just be that person. It's so nice to be that person. It feels good. So now as I say that, I hope that you got something out of this video. I hope that it taught you something. I hope you, it inspired you to do something. And so that's that's the whole conclusion to this talk. It had nothing to do with... I. It's hard to talk about this stuff, it's so hard to give that advice without talking about it from my own point of view, but it has nothing to do with me. I'm, I, I do not want any credit for doing the thing that I just said. I want you to do the thing that I just said, because that's, it'll help you. That thing will help you and make you feel good about yourself, and it will also help you to go forward. It'll help you move forward and remove the negative impact of constantly evaluating the numbers and put more value on, did you help someone? Yes, then it's worth it. Doesn't matter about all the bad stuff. And to briefly get back to the actual painting that I'm doing here, because it's kind of the elephant in the room here. It's, I'm not, anyway, so what this is, is the thing that I did here, I just wanted you to see how smooth it looked on the paper versus the watercolor ground that cracked everywhere. And this was put on pretty thick, but it came out much better. And also to show you that the inspiration can come from anywhere. You just have to find something that you enjoy looking at and then try and recreate it in an abstract way. And it, it comes out nice. It comes out, I was pleased with this. It wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but there's a lot of texture in there. There's a lot of different things in there that I really liked. I really enjoyed this piece. So that's it for me. I'd like you to give this a thumbs up if the your favorite color is not a normal named color. Like it's not blue or green. It's like periwinkle orange or something weird like that. Then please thumb up the video and I will see you in the next one.